All right, guys, now we're going to get into some of the lighting. Now, one thing that you probably noticed is that there is no interior furniture for this house. It's just bare rooms, and you've got some windows, and that's about it. There's nothing on the inside. So we got to be careful with this because if we light the inside and we make it too bright and the camera is positioned in the right place, what's going to happen is people are going to look at it and it's going to say, well, that's a beautiful scene, but it looks kind of awkward because there's no furniture on the inside of the house. Plus, there's no curtains anywhere. There's nothing as far as uh, that has been modeled in the way of furniture. It's just a bare house. So instead of going through my collection of models or trying to find some models online of interior parts which are just going to take you know it's just going to take the polygon count up even further instead of doing that I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a little trickery here and we're actually going to make some glass that kind of has a frost look to it and perhaps maybe some snow and ice has built up on the glass and maybe it looks kind of frosty from the uh, cold temperatures outside and that's just going to kind of give the appearance of maybe something is on the inside of the house but you can't see it because the glass is all fogged up and kind of frosty kind of like a beer mug when you put it in the freezer and the outside has kind of got that very thin layer of ice on it so we're going to get away with that all right so let's go ahead and get started with the lighting here so i'm going to jump out of the camera because i'd rather leave that camera in that position there i'm just going to hide it I'm going to turn the landscape objects off. I'm also going to turn off some of my objects here just so we can move around the scene a little better and I'm also going to turn off the snow. And as you can see I've got my all of my snow objects here. They're all together in a null and they're all placed under the hypernerb so that means I only have one hypernerb in the scene that affects all the snow. Alright so what I want to do is I want to create an area light and it's just going to be a regular square area light and you can see that it needs to be pitched down so I'm going to pitch this over to where the z-axis is facing down 90 degrees and what I want to do is I want to place this this is going to be like in the living room area where those big sliding glass doors are which are down here I mean I'm only guessing that would be the living room so something like maybe there and it needs to come down and it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing so I'm going to click here on these windows and I'm going to go hide them as well so lower windows we'll just hide those there we go alright so what I want to do is I want to place this as if it were a light up here close to the ceiling alright so we'll just bring it down a little bit like that all right, now we may need to put more than one in here, but just for the time being, we'll just put one. And we need to give it a V-Ray light tag. And for the V-Ray light tag, we'll go to Common, and we need to enable shadows. And for the color, what I want is a kind of like a light orangish, yellowish type of color. So maybe something like that. That's going to give us a, a warm color just to kind of get some contrast between the interior warmth of the house and the colder bluish purple color of the outside. All right, now we need to go over here to the area light tab and no decay. We actually want some decay. So we want to turn that off because if we have no decay, that's just going to be like an infinite light. It's just going to keep going and going. It's not going to have any decay at all. So for right now, we just want to turn that off. That way we will have some decay. And we don't need to use a texture or anything like that. All right, so we'll jump back into the camera. And I just want to render a little region here just to see what that's going to look like. Actually, that's not going to work because we need to apply a material to the glass. Okay, I'm just going to stop that. All right, so before we can actually do this, we need to create a new material. So we'll go to Create, uh, Shader, V-Ray Bridge, and we want to use the Advanced Material. And as I mentioned before in the first uh, interior V-Ray series that I did, this is the type of material when you're using V-Ray that you're going to be using probably 90 to 95% of the time is this Advanced Material. 
All right, so we want to open this up and we're going to call this frosted glass. And we want to disable the diffuse layer. We're going to go over to the refraction layer. And right now we just want to take the index of refraction down to just one. Now what we want to do is we want to take this glossiness uh, attribute here and we want to bring this down. So maybe something like 0.75. And now you can see what that looks like up there. Now more than likely, we're going to have to come back for the final render and take this subdivision up to perhaps maybe 16, maybe 24, because sometimes a value of 8, even though it's the default value, sometimes 8 can be a little low, and it just will look rather lowish quality. Uh, so sometimes you may need to come back and take that up. But for right now, we're just going to leave it at 8. All right, so now we want to take this material and actually what we want to do, since it's glass, is we want to go over to the first specular layer one, turn that on, okay? And what we want to do is just give the reflection a little bit of blur, so maybe something like 0.85. All right, and then we want to, let's see, we've got reflection, we've got specular, and let's take the highlight glossiness we want to take that to maybe 0.9. All right, maybe we'll go down to 0.8. And we also want to take, and I think for now we'll just leave the amount at uh, 90. All right, so we'll take this new frosted glass material, and we need to find our lower windows. So I'm going to take this and just drop it over here to the window. I'm just going to control click and drag to duplicate it up. We also want to do the top, but for right now we're just mainly concentrating on the bottom. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to render a little region right about there. All right, so you can see we've got some light coming through from the inside, but it's nowhere near as bright as what I want. And the reason, or part of the reason why it's not as bright as what it should be is because we deactivated the option called no decay. So what that means is it's giving this light a proper physical decay rate or fall off. So right now the decay is fine. The problem is the light just needs to be more intense. So what we're going to do is go back to the light and we want to go to the common tab and the intensity is set to 1. So let's really ramp this up to maybe something like 85. And of course you can see in the viewport suddenly we get all of this blown out stuff here. Uh, so what we could do is just hide the light for the viewport. And then we'll just render that region one more time. And this should start to stand out now. And the reason why I want to do this is because I want this nice orange warm light to come out of these windows to help illuminate the side of the house and also to help illuminate some of the snow. And you can see it's taking a little longer to render the glass because remember the glass has a blurred reflection and it also has blurred refraction or blurred transparency. All right, so I gotta be honest with you, that looks pretty good. The only thing that I don't like is we've got a, some noise up here, like right in this area here, but that's okay. We can always come back later and make some adjustments to that. All right, so that downstairs light looks pretty good. We've got a nice orange illumination here on the snow illuminating the side of the house over here. So I'm happy with that. So now what we can do is do the upstairs as well. So let's grab the light here and duplicate it. And I just want to take this up to the top. And I want to be able to see it that way. I make sure that it doesn't go through the ceiling. So I'm just going to unhide that. You can see that's way too much. So we need to just take the brightness back down to one on that for the intensity. That way we can see the outline because if we go too far, you can see it went, it just went through the ceiling and we don't want to do that. So I'm just going to bring that down to about there. We'll take the intensity back up to 
maybe the upstairs isn't as bright. So maybe we'll make the upstairs maybe 50 compared to 85 downstairs. All right, so we'll jump back into the camera and what we need to do is find those uh, windows there. So we'll go down here and we'll find them. There's the windows there. And we need to take our material over here to the windows, just like that. And then I'll just want to render a little bit of a larger region this time. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I don't think I really need to change anything. That looks fine to me. So we also need to apply uh, the same uh, frosted glass material to the sliding glass door. So there, that one, and we just need to go through here. There's the sliding window. And we also have another one there. So let's apply the material to those as well. All right, so we also need to apply it to, I'm just gonna jump out of the camera. And we have another window right there and right there. So we need to go find those as well. These are the two balcony windows. So we'll just apply some frosted glass to those. We also have those two there and that one there. So there's that one. We also have this one here. And we also have a rear window, which is right there. So we'll just put one there as well. All right, so let's take a look inside and see what we've got here. Let's hide some of these really quick. All right, so I think that'll be okay. Just making sure that I haven't missed any or at least anything that's going to be in the field of view for the camera. All right, so we want to take uh, this light here and we want to duplicate it. And what we want to do is we want to move it over to here. So this was the upstairs light. So we just want to take it and move it over here to upstairs. And we just want to make sure that it's not going to go through the ceiling, which you can see it's actually sitting down below it, so that will work out just fine. And what we'll do is we'll position this light kind of back over in the center of the room. All right, we also want to take this and perhaps maybe turn it down a little bit because this is just going to be a light for a room. It's not going to be as bright as, say, the dining room or the living room. So we want to take this down and we'll go to something like maybe 35. We'll duplicate that one more time. And this one needs to come down to this bottom room here. And again, we just want to make sure you can see we're sitting above the ceiling. So we need to come down and just bring this down below the ceiling. All right, so we'll jump back into our camera. And we've got a piece of glass there or something. Uh, more than likely, probably because I have some of these still hidden. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm just going to render this region here. So that actually looks pretty good. I actually like that orange color in there. I think that looks pretty good. Now, if you wanted to, what you could do is you could take a silhouette of a person or perhaps maybe you've got a model or something that you want to stick inside one of these rooms and just stick it just on the back side of the room here where these uh, windows and these doors are and that will give you the silhouette. Maybe you want to have somebody stand in there or something. I don't know. Maybe find the silhouette of a woman. I don't know. Maybe she's changing or something. I, I really have no idea. Maybe I'll come up with something by the end of this series and we'll have a woman that's here alone in the house by herself. All right, anyway. So that looks pretty good. I, I like the way that that's turned out. We're getting some really nice orange uh, showing up on the ground, on the trees, and on the different parts of the house, which looks really good. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to add a light to the outside because this, the, this model of the house actually has like a flood lamp that's sitting outside. So if you click here on this little box, you can see that there is a flood lamp there. Now, for some reason, it needs to be moved back against the wall. All right, so I'm just gonna push that back against the wall. And it looks like it needs to be rotated. 
don't know how that got messed up, but we just need to rotate that to about right there. All right, that looks just fine to me. So what we want to do is we want to place a light on the inside of this. So it'll just illuminate this a little more. But the thing is, we can use different types of light. We can use an area light, which more than likely that's what I'm going to use here. Or you could use an IES light. Now an IES light, you're going to need an IES file. And perhaps maybe in another tutorial, we'll get into all of that IES light stuff. But for this, I'd rather just stick with a small area light and just let it do its job. So with this little flood lamp housing selected, uh, what we want to do is we want to hold down the Alt key and just click Area Light. That will add the area light here to the inside. But what we're going to need to do is take the light, or take the flood lamp out of the light, and then take the light. And what I'm just going to do is just bring it back up here. That way we just have all the lights together. And I'm just going to rename this to Exterior Flood. And we need to give it a V-Ray light tag. So let's give it a V-Ray light tag. Now what I could have done, I probably just could have copied one of these tags over to it. Enable the shadow. And this light here, I'm going to give it uh, maybe like a really soft white yellow color. I don't want to go too dark. I just want to get just maybe something like that color there. Click OK. And then what we want to do is we want to, okay, we got shadows turned on. Uh, we want to go with the intensity and we want to take the intensity to about maybe 35. And it's kind of hard to see the light. That's okay. Uh, we may need to come back and take the intensity down so we can move the light, but I think the light should be okay where it's at. And we need to go to the area light and we want to change it from rectangle to a sphere. And yeah, it's going to be hard to see the light. So let's go back to the common tab and let's take this back down to one for the intensity. Go back to the area light tab. Take uh, no decay and take that off. And let's take the radius here of the light. And let's pull that down. So what I'll do here is I'll take the intensity to maybe something like, let's try. 0.2, that's still a little bright, let's go to 0.01, there we go. Okay, so you can see the light sitting there. It could probably be a little bit bigger, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to just kind of pull it down to be about right there. And let's take the radius up. All right, so let's just take it and even it out to a radius of five. We'll go back to the common tab and take the intensity back to 35 where it was at. And we have no decay on, so we'll jump back into the camera. And I just want to render that little area there. And what I'm looking for is I just want to see uh, the light showing up against the side of the house. And I just want to make sure that there's not going to be any hot spots here in the area. All right, so you can see the light is on and probably what we need to do is just increase it maybe just a little bit more because I want a little more light to show up on the area here where the overhang is, uh, where this front part meets this corner edge there, uh, that edge corner there. I just want this light to just barely show up in that area. So what we could do is the first thing is just take the intensity up. So I'll take it up to maybe 55 and we'll render that area one more time. You don't want to go too bright with it, otherwise it may cause a hot spot to show up on the side of the wall of the house, and we definitely don't want any hot spots. All right, what we need to do is make some more adjustments to this light. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and end this part, and in the next part we'll continue on with the lighting because we've got a couple of more exterior lights that we need to add as well. So I want to get this one flood lamp here. I want to get it fixed and adjusted properly and then we can just take that light and duplicate it and then make small adjustments for the other areas.